Thanks for leading that, Mally, and thank you, everybody, for singing. <clears throat> I don't remember a longer fellowship time than you just had, but I had something to do with what you're getting for Christmas, maybe. I don't know, but it's what this time of year is about. Um, some time ago, somebody asked me, hey, pastor, it's 10.33, isn't it time we start church? Because church is supposed to start at 10.30. But everybody was talking and ha hugging and fellowshipping like you're doing. And so it became really evident, and I didn't mean to be smart, aleck -y. Is that the right way to say it? <laughs> Some of you knew thought something else was coming. Anyway, I don't want to be smart, alecky, but I said church has already started. Because when you walk in the door and when you see somebody you haven't seen for a while, it's just the connection. The presence of God is here. And, and thank you for bringing your part of the presence of God with your, as you come. Have you ever been inside of a, a church building alone? It's just a creepy place. There's, it's... <laughs> You hear things, and, and it's like, Ugh, there's nobody here but me. But then when you come, you and I each bring a little bit of the presence of God with us when we come, and we establish the kingdom of God. Jesus said we're two or three. Well, we're, when you get a whole bunch of us, there's a, a, a manifest presence of God and who he is. That's, what, that's just, I love church like that. I, I want it to, I want the to understand his presence, which is what we're talking about today. We've been talking about the names of God, and today we're going to talk about Emmanuel. It was prophesied in Isaiah, and uh, chapter 7, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. His presence is with us. I had a friend who was a farmer, and one day um, he came to me, and I was, uh, we just ran into each other on the road and parked our pickups. Have you ever done that? You know, the pickups, one going this way, one going that way, and you start chatting. You see it, it's a normal occurrence. <laughs> and he said, something happened to me. I said, what? He said, I was out changing my wheel lines, and I felt this amazing feeling of the, I don't know, it felt like, it felt like I wasn't alone in that, like, God was with me. I don't know if it was because he was just looking at the beauty of the crops and the sky or whatever, but there was this incredible, strong presence of God. He said, was that the Holy Spirit? And Yes, I said, I think so. He said, do you think I could have, like, prophesied? <laughs> he asked me some hard questions. And I don't know, but there are times in our lives when we feel this incredible presence of God. I, I, and there's times when it, it, the feelings go away, but the presence of God is not dependent on our feelings. I'm going to talk about this a little bit here today. I, um, I had the peace of God I, that was, I, there's some times in my life that I was looking back and I was thinking, God, you've been so good to me. I was wondering when, when there were times when I could just tell, oh man, God's with me. I was getting ready for open heart surgery. And you have to take a shower. Well, I take them all the time anyway, but. <laughs> I, had, I had to take a really weird shower and put this colorful antibiotic all over myself. And it was just weird. And I had, I had to be sterilized. And, and then I got in the car and be careful and put on fresh clothes and don't touch anything. And I was like on my way to the hospital, like four in the morning or whatever. I got there at the hospital. And they laid me on this stainless steel cart. Yeah, stainless steel. 
I'm sure it was sterilized as well. <laughs> Put a little hat on you, you know, so the hair wouldn't fall into something that <laughs> shouldn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> and this, I mean, in there, along with these big rows, this was at OHSU in Portland, there's a whole row of us in there, and I mean, lots of them. And all of a sudden, this bell rings. It was like school. The door flies open, and we're starting to go down the hall, and people are going down, and it was, I wasn't the only one. There was like a whole row of us going down the hallway, dressed just like myself. And they're all cooking down the hallway. I got to tell you something. They, they put me on that thing, and they asked me, how are you doing today? They're playing some Led Zeppelin or something. I don't know what it was, music on the... It was like I was in a mash unit. <laughs> and I, I just told him, I said, I have never felt better. I am absolutely so peaceful. I shouldn't have been in my own mind. That would have been a good time to say, let's put this off till Thursday or something, you know. But I had this peace the same peace that my friend Mark told me about, that presence of God that was so strong and so real, it was on me. And I went to sleep. And I woke up. Tubes coming out of everywhere. It was, it was I lived, in case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I survived. Um... I want to talk to you today about feelings that Jesus can answer. Feelings that Jesus addresses. Um, the first one is fear. And you feel afraid. Because I would love to tell you that I felt great after the surgery. But I didn't. I was laying in the hospital. In the middle of the night, then they wheeled me up to recovery. And I had, I was in the recovery room and I was starting to feel the, the effects of all that was done to me. And it was in the middle of the night and I was right by the helicopter pad, which was in and out all night. And my night nurse who woke me up every seven minutes and gave me instructions and took my vitals I was nauseous, and I, she was helping me and doing things, and I said, oh. She said, how are you doing? I said, I smell garlic. <laughs> really strong. Oh, she said, oh, yeah. Somebody ran down to the Italian restaurant down the street and brought us all a bunch of really great pasta in the break room. And I had to ask her to just back away a little bit. <laughs> and from there, it got worse and worse and worse. I was struggling, and I was laying in that crazy hospital bed. And the next morning, Lila comes in and says, good morning. And she throws the curtains open, and the sun comes in. And, I just, I'm, and you see for like millions of miles from up on my perch in OHSU, and I was still nauseous, and the room was spinning. And I said, I think you're a little bit too perky, aren't you? <laughs> Hurt her feelings. But that's what I was feeling. So I'm just telling you, sometimes what we feel, it might be real to us. It might be something that we're actually dealing with. But I want us to come to terms with that today. And if you are feeling afraid that you don't know what's next in your life or you don't know how things are going to go, I want you to depend on facts today more than feelings. That Emmanuel is with us. He is not just with you in a feeling. He's with you whether you feel it or not. I like the feeling though. But this is where... We are in a culture today that is putting such high, high priority, high value on your feelings. If you feel a certain way, it must be truth. It must be fact. And I got to tell you, it's not truth. 
Because sometimes I don't feel like God is with me. And I feel like, oh, where did you go, Lord? My father-in-law, Stan, and my mother-in-law, Ellen, bought a cute little dog. They're 84 years old. Never had a dog since childhood, and now they've added a dog to the mix. They love this dog more than anybody else in the family. <laughs> so it's hurting our feelings a little bit. But I'm a dog guy. I love dogs. And so I come in the house. Hi, Luke. His name's Luke. Hi, Luke. How you doing? And Luke just runs. He won't come to me. He won't. He's just like shivering. He hides by their feet. Super codependent dog. Sitting there. Scared of me. And I say, Luke, come and come on. I lay on the floor. I do all I can. I throw little toys. And he's just like. <laughs> I told my father on stand. I said, I think he's a cat dressed up in a dog suit. <laughs> he is not like the dogs I've known. They come jump on your lap and lick your face and have this great relationship. And I'm not establishing a relationship with Luke. I'm going to keep trying. But he's afraid. He's afraid that I am not going to be nice to him. Or he's afraid of whatever. If he only would just come to me, I would pet him. I would put him on my lap. I'd give him a little food. I'd do anything. See, God, when we're afraid and we're alone and feeling and we're just like, oh, no, where's... I feel like I'm the only one that knows this. And all of a sudden, we start elevating our feelings to facts, like we're the only ones who, who are alone, or we're the only ones who feel afraid, or, or the only ones who feel this way. We have this sense. And it's like God's calling us, hey, hey, just come to me. Just take a step my direction. I want to read Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. It's about Joseph. <laughs> I mean, we talk about Mary, and we, we should, and it's wonderful, her heart, blessed among all women, to carry the birth of the Messiah into the world. But there's Joseph. And Joseph was a guy who was in love with Mary. He was excited about being married to her, and they were engaged, and it was like, this is going to be great. And Mary comes and says, oh, by the way, I am pregnant. And we're supposed to say, Joseph, it's God. And I wonder what Joseph thought. I mean, he was struggling. He was struggling so much, he had to have a visitation from an angel. And here's what happens. Verse 20 of Matthew because he was thinking about putting her quietly and divorcing her and separating and just kind of making this all go away. But he was probably super torn up about it. Verse 20, but after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, which he, he, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin shall conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Joseph had feelings, and his feelings were to quietly deal with this in the least embarrassing way. Because he still loved Mary, but he just, so he had to have a visit from the Lord's angel, which came and talked to him. And he said, do not be afraid. Overcome that feeling of fear. Um, Don't be f afraid to take Mary as your wife. Take a step. Take a 
step my direction. See, when we're afraid and we're paralyzed and we're all locked up, God is calling us, take a step toward me. And trust me, oh, if that little dumb dog would just take a step toward me, he would find that I'm not going to hurt him. And he would start to like me. If, and God is calling on Joseph here to say, hey, don't be afraid to take that step. And God wants you to know that there's sometimes a step that you have to take that's beyond the feelings and into the fact area where God is with you and he is for you. And if you will take a step. I mean, sometimes you're in relationships that, and you have a new one formed and the last one you want to punish the new one with all the things that the last one did. Sometimes you're in a church body and you had some bad times in, a, in the past and you want to treat the next church body with all the hurts from the past. God wants you to know that if you're going to get released of that, you're going to have to get your feelings under control and let the facts drive your life. And the fact is God is with you and he's asking you to take a step toward him. Open up. Trust me. Come on. Lila hates that when I say that to her. <laughs> Want to go for a ride? <laughs> I don't know why that's a problem. <laughs> see, see this, this, uh, these feelings that we elevate so high, and fear is one of them. It wasn't long, and a lady in our congregation had pneumonia and she had such a terrible bout. She fell in her house and couldn't get up, she was so weak and she ended up in the emergency room with pneumonia with tubes all coming out of her and Lila and I went up there and it's what we do, We're, we go visit the people that are in our flock and we went to the hospital and we walked into that room and I saw these tubes and it wasn't long before that that I was in OHSU with all the tubes coming out of me, and I just like, hmm. Anybody feel that way? I actually had to step out to the hallway and, and gather myself. But she was in there and needed prayer. And, he, I, you know, I, I could have phoned it in, I guess. But you see what happens to us we elevate these feelings, and they soon become fact. And as I walked in there, and I, I took a breath, and then like Joseph, I had to take a step and, and go ahead and obey the Lord here and take this step of faith and trust and put my feelings where they belong and keep the facts where they belong, that God is with me. I'm still a little iffy about hospital rooms. Just the way we are. It's okay. Just gather yourself and take a step that God wants you to take. So, one of the feelings that Jesus answers is the feeling of fear. And he just calls us to him. Walk with me. Remember Peter in the boat? Jesus was on the, the, the lake in the, in the ocean. In the ocean was a lake, a big lake. And they... They thought he was a ghost. He was walking on the water, the famous event of him walking on the water. And Peter said, if that's you, Lord, call me. I'll come to you. And Jesus called his bluff, said, yeah, it's me. Come, Peter. And Peter gets out of the boat. Have you ever wondered what water felt like under your feet? Is it slippery? Is it like ice? But it was weird because Peter started looking around. He got afraid. But Jesus called him forward to take a step. And he called him forward. And that's, I'm just telling you, weirdness and fear and things that you don't understand, quite often turn into fear because you don't understand them. And I just, I'm just encouraging you to take a step that God is calling you to do. Don't be afraid to take that step. Now, I want to be sensitive to this. I, I understand anxiety is a thing. Sometimes it's genetic. Sometimes it's physical. 
Sometimes it's from real things that have happened in your past that you still are dealing with. I want to give you space to deal with it, but I'm just telling you, deal with it. Because God wants to use you in new ways. And if, you, if we're all locked up in fear and we can't take any steps uh, toward what God is calling us to do, if we're, if we're just going to stay in our own little comfort zone, it's a dangerous zone to be in. Ray Lewis, the very famous philosopher, says the comfort zone is the most dangerous zone there is. God wants us to be brave. The second feeling Jesus helps us to deal with is sometimes we feel sinful. Does anybody feel like you're sitting in a church full of people and you feel like a fraud? If anybody really knew what I was like. You know, some of our greatest family fights were on the way to church. <laughs> well, I had four sisters, two brothers. Dad would go out in the car sometimes, and everybody was, he was a Sunday school superintendent, and he'd just sit in the driveway and honk. Beep, beep, come on. We had a half an hour to get to church, and he couldn't be late. And everybody's getting in the car, and they're all like, come on, I was coming, I was coming. We're going to go worship the Lord. <laughs> And he'd get to church, and he'd feel like, maybe we should repent first. <laughs> you know, before we, before we start church, could we just have a little moment of silence? We can get all our hearts right again. <laughs> but the enemy is a liar. Let me tell you this. The enemy is a liar, and he will lie to you all the time that you are too sinful for God. You're too sinful for the church. You're too sinful to be used by God. If you can just, maybe he'll just, well, just come in and sit quietly. And don't let anybody, just, he's lying to you. Jesus called him the father of lies. John chapter 8. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. This is the words of Christ. Talking about the enemy of your soul. He will tell you that you're too sinful, you're too far gone, you're too weak, you're too dumb. He engages in lying. Again, it's not a fact, it's a feeling. And Jesus is calling us to trust him with the fact, as Romans 8 says, there is therefore now, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Trust him with the fact that you are worthy because you have come and said, Jesus, I need you, and he, he's there for you. He covers you. Forgive me of all my stuff, Lord. Yeah, I already forgave you. Before you brought it up, it's gone. Whew. You ought to be a pastor sometimes and think you have to get up and talk to people and have some of the stuff in your life. See, the enemy is attacking me too. And he's telling me all kinds of stuff. You're not ready. What are you doing preaching today? You're just not prepared. I heard that one this morning. <laughs> I think we have to just kind of like, Devil, you're so stupid. I, my feelings are not what are going to drive me here. The fact is that Jesus is Emmanuel, and he's God with us. This is the truth. This is the gospel. And you might be sitting here today feeling so sinful. You might feel like you, you're just dirty, or you might, you know, just, you ever go to rummage sales and do through all the clothes and stuff like that, and you come home and it's like, huh. I feel like I need a shower. And sometimes we come to church that way. It's like, oh, God, I, I think I need a shower. Maybe you guys had a fight on the way to church today, and I was pushing some buttons there. I don't know. <laughs> Can I just tell you? Here's a fact. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. It's the truth. It's the gospel. And that he loves you, and he cares for you, and he accepts you as you are. And he covers you with his, with his great sacrificial blood that covers the world. 
verse 21, this angel said to Joseph, she will give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus, which means Emmanuel, which it means he will say he's a, it means savior. He will save his people from their sins. Joseph, take a step and let this happen because I have called you to be a part of this story. I have called you to take a step that you're good enough to do this. The, the world needs the Savior. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And I don't get it. But sometimes in our background, in the religious upbringings we've had, well, I don't know if it's a lot of sermons or whatever misguided teaching that somehow you're just, you know, God loves you so much. And then when you get saved and you, or you run to the altar or you, your life is transformed, then God is a little bit disappointed from then on. That somehow you're just not measuring up. After all, he saved you. Clean up your act. And we think that the love of God changes at that moment. But I'm telling you, it intensifies. His love for you at that moment when you decide, I'm going to make him my Lord, it intensifies. It just completely, he's with us. And there's a lie uh, and a liar who is the enemy of your soul who will tell you that somehow you're pretending. Somehow you're a fake. Somehow you're not. I'm just calling him out today. Stop talking to the people. The truth is, God is with you. And he loves you. And there's no feeling of sinfulness that he doesn't overwhelm with truth. And that truth is that he loves you and forgives you. third feeling that Jesus deals with and overcomes is that feeling of being alone. We feel afraid, we feel sinful, and we feel alone. Verse 23 says this, that this all took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, that a virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The feeling of aloneness, the feeling of loneliness, is a feeling. It might be a, based on a fact that you used, you used to have somebody in your life and you don't. I get it. And I want to walk carefully down this path. There are definite alone times. I was in the hospital all alone with that nurse with garlic on her breath. I, I understand the lonely feelings. There's some truth to that, and you feel alone. But you have to let the truth of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, overshadow all that and make you know that he is with you. Because you will suffer loneliness in a crowd. Hmm. We used to watch that show called Alone. Has anybody seen that one? Where they go into the deepest, darkest woods. Most of you would like it. <laughs> and they put them by themselves. And they have to survive. I mean, they, they trap mice, and there's bears growling around, and this big burly dude, I think he was a SEAL team guy or something, was all tatted up with a big beard, and he was going in, and he wasn't afraid of nothing. And they go in the first night, he heard a bear sound, and he called it in. I'm done. <laughs> I can't do this. I miss my family. He burst into tears. I miss my kids. This isn't worth it. <laughs> uh, sometimes, you and I through life go through things and we feel alone. Uh, can I just tell you that you can call that in too? And that actually God will come. 
And he'll manifest himself with you in a way that seems real because it is real. The feeling of loneliness, the feeling of not having anyone else care, all of a sudden it disappears in the truth that God cares and that he loves you and he's with you. I, I just love the fact that Jesus is with us. And I want you and I to challenge the feelings today and throughout our life. The feelings that we're alone, the feelings that we're too sinful, the feelings that we're just freaked out and afraid. Let those feelings be feelings, but let the facts of God be the facts of God in your life. And declare it over your life. Pray. Talk to him. Phone it in. I can't take this. God, I need you. I hear a bear outside. Um, so the whole idea of Christmas is that it's Emmanuel, God with us. He comes to us, and like Joseph, I want to challenge you to take the step. Take a step toward him, because it requires a response. He's God with us, but we need to take a step and say, okay, I'm going beyond my feelings, and I'm going to what I know, that you are God with us. You are Emmanuel. You're with me. The feelings will come later. They come and go. But the fact of who Christ is stays. Let's pray. I don't know. I'm sure we have a room like this. We have a lot of people with different feelings all over the place. And I, I want you to know that's okay. But it might not be truth. <laughs> the truth is, you have a Lord that loves you. And if you're here today, just with our heads bowed, and, and you'd like to acknowledge some truth to this fact and take a step toward him, could you open your hand up to him? You can either raise it or just open it to him. Say, God, I need you to do this in my life here. I am, I've been going by feelings. I've been going by the things that I think are true. But I want to depend on the fact that you are Emmanuel with us. Okay? You can put them down because we're going to pray together. Jesus, thank you. You see our hearts toward you. You see our need of you. You see the fact that we need you in our lives and we ask you to come and overwhelm those feelings of failure, sinfulness, fear, all those feelings that are in our lives. Help us get them in perspective to the truth of who you are. So we, we turn from our ways and we come to you, Lord, and we take a step. And we ask your Holy Spirit to help us in this journey every day in your name. Amen.